Well, a few years ago, we farm up here in Cache Valley, which is in northern Utah, and uh, it, we, we were expanding the land base and just needed a way that we could get over the field uh, quicker. I guess we turned a little lazier, and so we're looking for ways to come back. And so talking around, I know some guys, a few guys were just starting with the no-tail, and it seemed like that was a good system. And the more we researched, the more we become interested in. And so uh, we jumped, jumped uh, in the pool and bought a couple of uh, no-till drills and things and so, so we could do that. And uh, we have found uh, a little bit of learning curve with that, but the benefits we see uh, with reduced tillage, reduced times over the field, the diesel savings, just the time on our part savings has been very beneficial. We've been able to reduce some of the nitrogen costs which we have uh, can save where some of that residue goes back in the soil. The overall health of the soil just seems really good. It just seems like it's getting better every year, especially on the fields where we've been no-tilling now for about four years. It's working out really well. Our compaction is gone. It seems like our seed germinates as well, and uh, we hope to maybe uh, bring in a few more rotations in with this with the system now as we, we do that, kind of fixate some nitrogen and things with different crops. Uh, mostly what we've been in the past is wheat and corn, but we're bringing some flax in and some safflower and some grain sorghum, a little bit of soybeans. So we're trying different crops so we get the rotation down. I think, uh, I think it's going to be really beneficial to us and our family is keep the, this, our farm sustainable for the next generations. It's, uh, we're excited about it. On our particular operation, almost all of our acres are, are irrigated. We, we have um, from the standard wheel lines, hand lines, a little bit of that. Most of it's pivots, and probably about a third of it is uh, the flood irrigation with the border, borders in there, and that's kind of our typical. And this has fit very well for us in all three systems. What we've done in the flood irrigated, we've had the borders, they vary anywhere from 60 to 90 feet, depending on how long a run it is. And uh, we find that if we, when we harvest the wheat, uh, we, we, we sometimes we bail a little bit off, but most of the residue stays there. And then we no-till the cover crops in, flood, flood irrigate that, it all comes back. And when we, on the borders themselves, when we drill those in the fall, we, we drill over the top of them so the crop grows right over the borders too. And then so all the residue stays there. And now we're finding, as we rotate back into like a row crop, like corn this year, that all that wheat humus from the year before stays there and helps hold that water back. And so it waters just like your water in alfalfa or grain. It, it just progresses just even through the whole field. We, we, wash, we don't wash dirt anymore like we used to when you're trying to flood irrigate the furrows. Uh, and then the labor saving is tremendous and so we've, we've had some, some really good success with that. We've had some challenges on placing nitrogen though on those flood fields so we've got to work through that and also sometimes uh, the, the residue we're going to plan on doing a strip till very late in the fall like in the first part of November when the cover crops are done growing and then I think it will solve those problems for us. We have only done it for a year or two, so we're really new at it, but we've used peas and tillage radishes and just the volunteer wheat is what's come, and it's worked out really well. Uh, those old radishes get up like a turnip and really big, and the peas is fixating on nitrogen. Um, we're looking at maybe some vetch or something. Before, what we've done uh, last year is uh, as soon as we've cut harvested the wheat, we went in with our no-till drill and just drilled right through the stubble and then irrigated it up, and that seemed to work really well. Uh, what we use to terminate our, our cover crops in, this, in the spring prior to planting is just a broad spectrum herbicide that just takes it all down. It actually works really well. The residue keeps the new weeds from growing. Uh, it's quite effective if you manage it right. What we have found worked the best uh, is talking with a few, there's just a few of guys that have start, tried it before me. Their help was just very, I mean, with their advice was very helpful to us to get started. We also took a trip back to the Dakota Lakes Research Farm. That, that farm's been in no-till now for about 30 years, and uh, some good information there. And then just online, there's a lot of good stuff online that you can just Google and search, and, and you can tell a lot. Farm magazines will have quite a lot of ops, you know. Probably the best thing is, is talk to somebody in the area that's already done it, because every area is a little bit different, like we're different from the Midwest, and so that's why I say the guys that have been here doing a little longer than I have has been very valuable to me.